Good evening, everybody. Hashtag the pursuit makes its way to the east coast of Canada, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Rematch from last year's NBL final. And so far, similar results. London winning game one, Halifax winning game two. Halifax won game three last year. Tonight, they hope that their past result is the present. While the London Lightning want to make the past the past. It's game number three of the NBL finals from the Scotiabank Center. London Lightning and the Halifax Hurricanes on NBL Canada YouTube. As we take a look at the starting five for the London Lightning, Kyle Johnson, 24 points in game two. Junior Cadogan, Garrett Williamson, who's had a lot of success against the Halifax Hurricanes. The NBL MVP, Royce White, and Ryan Anderson rounds out the starting five for the London Lightning. For the Hurricanes, Tyrone Watson, Cliff Clinkscales, Antoine Mason, CJ Washington, and Billy White. My name is Dan Hobson, joined alongside here by my usual broadcast colleague, Vince Williams. And uh, Vince, you were at game number two. I guess you were a little bit of a good luck fortune for the home team there as you went. Of course, you had a fantastic weekend watching the Blue Jays Friday night and then went to uh, London, the Budweiser Gardens, and had a chance to watch this uh, game number two. And the uh, Hurricanes just came away by the skin of their teeth with a 111-110 win, but London had a chance to pretty well make it 2-0, but the bucket didn't go in the last shot. Absolutely, Dan. It was absolutely electric inside Bud Gardens for game number two. I had an opportunity. It was my first time there visiting uh, London and the Lightning organization. World-class organization, first class all the way. Uh, the fans were very much into the game before it even got tipped off. I could just feel the energy the moment I stepped into the building. But uh, the Halifax Hurricanes, I mean, they fought through all that energy in game number two. Had an opportunity to speak to both coaches after the game. And I mean, if you look at the talent on both of these teams, it's pretty much even. And right down to the stretch, this ball game went game number two. And it, it was just basically was decided by a couple possessions. And Halifax did a good job of getting the stops and they played defense responsibly. They were able to get the stops when they needed and they were able to get shots when they needed and make those shots down the stretch. And that was the difference in winning that ball game. And this is the reason why we're one and one and they have home court advantage now. Referees, John Hunt, Brian States and Paul Hansen. And the opening tip went to the London Lightning here. Game number three underway. Lightning, of course, in their black jerseys as White was unable to head inside the paint there, but they get the second chance opportunity and a new clock. As we take a look at Garrett Williams, since I mentioned off the top, he's had a lot of success, double figures and points against the Hurricanes, of course, in the regular season as well as playoffs last year. And the rebounding hurting the Hurricanes here, and they're going to be called for the foul, and it's going against Billy White, his first first team foul. Yeah, not a good start there off the first possession for the London Lightning, uh, excuse me, for the uh, Halifax Hurricanes in defense, that is. The Lightning in a hole had 10 offensive rebounds for 48 minutes. Halifax did an outstanding job of limiting the Lightning to second chance opportunities, and in this first opportunity on defense, they gave up two second chance opportunities, so not the start defensively the Hurricanes were projecting. Speaking of not the start that uh, Garrett Williams had wanted from the line, one of two, 76% from the three throw line with the playoffs and regular season combined. So we're coming up to the one minute mark, one nothing for the London Lightning. Antoine Mason hits the three and gets the crowd going here on a Tuesday night from the Scotiabank Center. Yeah, Antoine Mason was outstanding in game number two. He was two for seven from beyond the arc. Finished up with 27 points, 10 for 21 from the field. And he was a catalyst down the stretch in the fourth quarter, helping Halifax win that game. Just saw Ryan Anderson hit the three and made it 4-3 for the meantime, but Halifax came back and got the bucket and makes it 5-4. Looks like we're gonna be in for another high scoring affair. So far we haven't just passed the one minute mark. Another bucket there for London makes it six to five. Yeah, Anderson struggled in game number two, was one for eight from the field, finished up tonight with only three points on the night, and it was a frustrating night for him. So look to him to try to continue this hot shooting in the early going. Here is the MVP of the season, Royce White, the former Houston Rocket. Gets the give and go there from Anderson, but can't hit, and Billy White there goes up to the sky and brings the ball down for the Halifax Hurricanes. Hurricanes dodge a bullet there defensively on that pick and roll. 
As Royce White, you won't see Royce White miss many of those shots a foot away from the basket. You talk about the hot hand that Ryan Anderson, where he said how cold he was, but he's had been pretty good in game three. Last year, he had 10 points against the Hurricanes last year in game number three. Off to a good start here this afternoon, this evening. Watts a tough take, but couldn't get the go. And they try to get it up to Williamson, stolen there. Hurricanes numbers the other way. Watson, give it go. White lost the rock there for a second. So now they'll settle it down. Antoine Mason. Mason had a pretty fantastic game too, 27 points. And CJ Washington also had a pretty good one. Hits the three there, 27 points in game number two. Yeah, and that's a force as the time out called. It looks like Garrett Williamson it's not happy as he looks like he sustained some type of shot to the mouth, so he goes to the bench and Capers jumps into the game for him. So Garrett Williamson looks like he's bleeding from the mouth and the reason for why is there was a stoppage in play there, but an outstanding shot, as you mentioned, by C.J. Washington. He played, his, he played his heart out as well, continuing the hot shooting. He was 12 for 22 from the field, 12 rebounds and 27 points. Outstanding performance from him in game number two after having a very cold 13 points in game number one. White now double teamed over Watson. Almost got that one to go. Capers couldn't get the finish there. Of course, Capers really known more for his defense than his offense. Quickly inside and a foul called. As Paul Hanson was on the sideline, made the fall. foul call. It's the first one going against the London Lightning. And it's going against Kyle Johnson, his first. 8.51 left to go. Billy White likes the matchup against Capers. He'll back in on Capers, taking it in deep. Clock at 12. We'll throw it over in the corner. Clink scale, shot clock at nine. Hands it off, Antoine Mason. He's the hot man so far. Give him the rock, clock at three, puts it up. Yeah. Looking for contact is, yeah, nice and so look. are some of the Hurricanes fans at our courtside here. Close to our broadcast location, not too happy with Paul Hanson right now. Well, that's an indication on where this game is going to go and being called by the officiating crew this evening. And so lots of contact on both ends of the floor and not many foul calls being called. Only the one, excuse me, the two. One on Cal Johnson and the other on Billy White. Good news, bad news, good news. Hurricane stole the ball, but Billy White stepped out of bounds. That was the bad news, so we'll... Go back to London here with 8.18 left. If we take a look at Kyle Johnson, 24 points in game number two, ready to inbound here for the London Lightning. And he was outstanding from beyond the arc, and he was, he was getting it done from that distance. He was very good on the afternoon. Marcus Capers just hit a three. Last year he had two points in game number three. Now he just surpassed that with one <laughs> shot. He surpassed that in game number two as well. He has zero points over, over five minutes played for the, uh, the London Lightning. Mason once again, the hot hand, 11-9. Anderson, what's good for the goose, good for the gander, comes back with a three. Yeah, you can see Anderson is, has a sense of urgency early in this game, and it looks like he's not going to try to duplicate the performance of game number two as he is two for three from the field and two for two from downtown early in this game. He's had a lot of success against the Hurricanes, 10 points in the first matchup these teams had in the regular season as Clint Scales hits one. And that's a good shot to see, you like to see the rhythm of Clint Scales. Clint Scales pretty much struggled from that distance all season long, but he seemed to find the magic in the playoffs and he's come up with some timely situations offensively and defensively being able to help this team win throughout the playoffs. So it's clinch Kales can knock down those threes. It's gonna be a long night for London's defense as it looks like they're backing off clinch Kales and not giving him the space and time inside that painted area to go to work. Tyra Watson caught for the foul. And this will send White to the free throw line. And you can hear Crowd try to get odd to him and unsuccessful that time. We want to say hello to the fans watching back home in light, uh, London. Hope you guys enjoy the game here on the east coast of Canada. Maybe they've gotten together at one of the local pubs to watch this one. We hope you enjoy it here at NBL Canada alongside Vince Williams. My name is Dan Hobson. 
And we're glad we could bring this one to you as the foul goes against Junior Cadogan. Yeah, be look, his first second team foul. Sorry, yeah, a lot of contact up without moving away without the basketball between Cadogan and Mason. So you would see that Cadogan wants to try to contain Mason this evening and make sure that he doesn't go off statistically. Lead pass up ahead. And Clake Scales leads with the official in the meantime. Yeah, both teams are looking for some fouls here and some contact. As I mentioned in the previous possessions, these officials are allowing both of these teams to play through it. It's gonna be a physical game and I mean, they got to adapt to that and try to keep their heads. Anderson with the ball, drives and gets the bucket. Yeah, he's going to work right now, Anderson, and he's attacking Watson on every opportunity with the basketball. It's not even looking to pass it. And you do. This was going to start to happen once you get into a series that things are going to start getting a little bit in terms of pushing, shoving, and a little bit of uh, oh, yeah. post-whistle activities. You just knew it was going to be a matter of time. Well, I mean, games one and two was pretty subdued. It was not a lot of activities after the whistle. It was not a lot of pushing and shoving, but as the series goes on and these two teams realize that, you know, the championship is on the line, it's gonna to start to get a little bit more physical. Capers called for the foul, his first, a third team foul. A quick inbound, unsuccessful there, and Anderson will cross the timeline. 6.20 left to go, stops, pops for the three, no good. Yeah, and it looks like Watson is down and that is not a good sign for the Halifax faithful as Watson is favoring his right ankle. But it's definitely below his knee. He's, around, he's holding his right ankle, so it might be a twisted ankle. As Watson is down, and that's not good, Dan. I mean, just named to the all-defensive team in the National Basketball League of Canada and an outstanding season for the Hurricanes in his return. The Halifax playing under the new organization here. And let's hope that Watson is not down for long and he's not sustained any type of long-term injury. Don't like to see players sustain those type of injuries as we're still waiting for the return of Garrett Williamson as he's still continuing to be at, attended by the physio staff of both teams of the Hurricanes and the Lightning as Watson makes it back up to his feet, but it looks like he's not 100% right now. Yeah, so far it looks like a little bit of a uh, demolition derby so far, Williamson still being attended to. Well, and uh, as you mentioned about Watson there, and. Hopefully, you know, both of these bodies, especially uh, Williamson being really important to the uh, London Lightning as he is, and of course the defensive prowesses of Tyrell Watson. So if we, hopefully we'll be keeping an eye on things there. And if we have any updates, of course, we'll pass them along to you. Yeah, both of these guys are major contributors in game number two. Watson with 16 points and Garrett Williamson with 18. Poole, who didn't play in game two, shot clock at four, Washington. Along the end line, can't go. White with the rebound, quickly up to Anderson. Swings it over, Johnson, open look for three. And that's short 10. Yeah, but Cadogan comes up with a second chance. Can't allow that guy to stand still, threes beyond the arc. He will light you up, and they dodge the bullet twice as he's 0 for 2 from the field. So a cold start from that distance for Kyle Johnson. Johnson put up a 51 mark on the season, so he knows how to fill it up. So you can't leave that guy stand still threes from beyond the arc. 5.39 left to go here in the opening quarter. The London Lightning up by a bucket, 16 to 14. And so far, take a look at the top scorer so far, Ryan Anderson, barely doing very well. 10 points here already in double figures and points. And uh, uh, Antoine Mason, six points. So you pretty well know he's been hot shooting. He'll be in double figures just a few minutes from now too. So. Both teams doing very well. Off to a good start. Probably uh, definitely entertaining for sure for the fans, but the coaches are probably saying, boy, you know, we gotta start playing some D here. Let's get some hands and some faces here and make it difficult for some looks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're struggling. Both teams are struggling shooting from the field. The London Lightning 38%, five for 13 from the field. Uh, the Halifax Hurricanes five for 12, just a little bit better at 41%. But uh, yeah, you mentioned, as you mentioned, and I as well, several times, Aunt Ryan Anderson, the high man, the hot man right now, four for five from the field, and Antoine Mason. So it's all guard play. 
In the early going, games number two and games number one, it was the guys in the inside, in the post. Billy White going to work for the Hurricanes and Royce White for the Lightning. So a different type of uh, game plan for both teams thus far, not because they won't, don't want their big man to be active and involved in their offense, just that the guard play has just been a little bit better by their bigs. And of course, a reminder that uh, game number four of this series will be Thursday night. Once again, same time, 7-10 here, Atlantic 6-10, Eastern Standard Time here on NBL Canada YouTube. And one of these teams hoping to be up 2-1. We'll have to find out when this one's done and over who that will be. Hurricanes down by 2, 16-14, but they'll swing in the ball inside and swat it there. There's Doug Herring Jr., one of the veterans here in this league. He's actually 24th all-time in NBL field goals, 426. That shows goes to show you how long he's been around as Marcus Capers once again. Deep ball for three, five-point lead. Coming up to five to go here in the first. Well, Marcus Capers has taken advantage of his opportunity to play as Garrett Williamson looking to check back in as he's got five points on the evening. Poole airs it out, no good. There's a fight for it and Washington comes up with it in a new 24. Clink scales down. White, Poole in the corner there. Lots of time on the 24 shot clock. Poole puts it up and over and that's no good. And the London Lightning gather it up there. And the former Halifax Hurricane, Joel Friesen on the floor here. As well as White. Capers thought about it and stopped. Puts the brakes on. 10 to shoot now. And will swing it over to Johnson. In the corner, White back it in. Loses the uh, ball as he actually hit Billy White. And Billy White now favoring his head. So it's like... Trying to shake the cobwebs out, as he is, and uh, for, of course, a former uh, Hurricane Criswell coming out on the floor, wearing number 22 here for the London Lightning. And they'll give a chance for Royce White to have a sit down. So a slow start for the MVP, Royce White, 0 for 4 from the field. Two points, the only two points coming from the free throw line. So the Hurricanes doing a good job of neutralizing White thus far. But it's been the guard play of the London Lightning that's been doing the bulk of the, the scoring this evening early. Link takes it to the paint and then kicks out and puts up a three. No good as he gets a return pass. Doug Herring Jr. who averages 14.9 points a game. Polk's season last year when he was a member of the Mill Rats. Of course, now they're known as the Riptide as they're under new ownership. Clank scales down with the ball. 3.35 left to go. Takes it strong. Might have been a little bit of contact, but can't get it to go as Doug Herring Jr. gets the ball crossing the timeline. Friesen, no stranger to this building, takes it in. Poole picks his pocket. He's one of the top players at steals here for the Hurricanes, and it's a jump ball. Possession in favor of the Halifax Hurricanes as we take a look at the former Hurricane, Joel Friesen. Yeah, quick hands by Mike Poole. Good job of knocking it away by Friesen. Friesen was able to get into the lane with a nice dribble crossover. Just was unable to stay in control of the basketball. So far, Kyle Julius not afraid to go to his bench there. He's brought Marvin Phillips as a veteran as well. As the Mason hits the three in the corner and makes it 19 to 17, coming up to three to go. Herring Jr. Williamson back out on the floor after getting some medical treatment there for a busted op uh, lip. And both teams are looking for some contact, Dan, and it's not coming on both sides. There have been multiple possessions where guys have been able to get inside that painted area, break down the defensive pressure, but they were looking for contact, and it's just not there. But Antoine Mason continuing his hot shooting, and in a great play there as Joel Friesen knocks down a three there and step back. Got to close out all the way on Friesen. Friesen knows the different angles here at the Scotiabank Center. He was a very good shooter from beyond the arc in their championship run last season for the Hurricanes. His game three success against the London Lightning. He had 10 points last year when these teams met. Blake Scales now trying to set it up. Cox out there, there's White, tough bucket as the clock was winding down. And he'll go to the line. 
Beautiful play. Let's hope we take a look at the replay. Here it comes. Outstanding play by Clint Scales. The great patience and the, the presence of mind to dish it inside. It looked like he wanted to go to Cox, but Cox was blocking out and thought he was shooting it. And Billy White just in the right position at the right time. Was very optimistic with that play, and he has an opportunity to finish the three-point play here through the contact. And he does. It makes it a two-point game, and quick inbound there by the London Lightning. 2.23 left to go, and lots of fouls to give here for both these teams here. Only four team fouls for London and two for the Halifax Hurricanes. Mason trying to go for the steal, unsuccessful. Doug Herring Jr. back in the end on Clank Scales into the paint. Clock at six. Williamson cuts, drives, swatted away there by Poole. And a, the Hurricane Force show their appreciation. And they'll quickly get transition into offense. Billy White, pocket picked. And now numbers three on two the other way. Williamson fakes, takes, and bucket. That's going to be what the, uh, the mantra is going to be, the motto for the, the London Lightning all evening long. They're going to try the double team Billy White on the post. They're not going to allow Billy White go one-on-one -on -one with his defender. They're going to force Billy White into making the tough pass and finding the open shooter on that possession. White just a little bit careless with it, and he turned it over. Base at corner three. Can't get it to finish. And Doug Herring Jr. with the ball going coast to coast. Lost the handle, goes out of bounds, Hurricanes ball. They take a look at the Doug Herring Jr. drive and deflects off him before going out of bounds. Nice hands there by the Hurricane defender. Mason puts up the three in the meantime, and that's no good. And once again, demolition derby and freezing and Julius both wanting calls yeah. as Doug Herring Jr. a little bit slow to get up. Very physical game, and I told you right at the top, the first few possessions, no calls, there's lots of physical play, and they're allowing these teams to decide this game number three, and I hope this is the trend that continues and carries over to the second, third, and fourth quarter. If you're going to allow these teams to be physical, make sure you're consistent with it, and make sure it's for the whole 48 minutes. Rado Dixon on the floor. Now you see him guarding Phillips. There is Criswell, Cox on him, under a minute to go. Phillips puts it up and gets the nice touch in the finish. Makes it 26 to 20. We're coming up to 42 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter. Dixon, Cox, through the paint, contact and bucket. That was a nice play, big to big there. Ronaldo Dixon drawing the double team and Anthony Cox moving out the basketball. Was able to finish through the contact, so a beautiful half court safe there for the Hurricanes. Gonna go one for one here as there's a seven second difference between the game clock and shot clock. And Cox was saying, I got ball there on Quizwell's drive, but, and I'm not sure if our microphones can pick it up, but let's take a look at it and everybody at home can have their opinion on it. And yeah, that was a good move there. Maybe the contact on the left arm as Criswell was it going to take that shot. A lot of fans here courtside screaming for a travel, but it looked like in that replay that he did manage to put the ball down before he decided to take steps and make his way towards the basket. 73% free throw shooter is Criswell and tins the first one. Keeps it a four point game, 26 to 22. 59 of 81, he's averaging about 7.3 points in the regular season and playoffs is Chris Well, and he goes one for two. And it's a five point game. And there's fouls to give and there's Doug Herring Jr. taking one there, so. It'll be the fifth team foul. Doug Herring Jr. called for his first. Foul point three ticks as you see left to go. Mike scales with the ball. Cox setting up a screen there. And Pool gently from the corner hits it. And that's how the first quarter ends. That's a huge shot there by Mike Poole. Very positive statement to end that 
the first 12 minutes. Poole struggled a little bit offensively, but he was very good defensively, getting a, a couple deflections and a block shot on the defensive side. So that's a positive thing that should carry over into the second quarter for Mike Poole. So it's good to see Mike Poole find his range at the buzzer here. And a great statement at the end of the first 12 minutes for the Halifax Hurricanes as they struggle to find their way. Both teams struggle to find their way offensively shooting from the field. Hurricanes finished that quarter eight for 22 from the field, 36% on the quarter and the London Lightning slightly just a little bit better at 45%, nine for 20. But love the pace, it's uh, been pretty well up and down. And so we should be in for a dandy, of course. Uh, these teams are pretty well, like, the record may not indicate of how similar they are because the London Lightning went 35-5 in the regular season, but both teams have three players that were here, play for the respective teams last year. So, and... Uh, well, if you throw out the record, Dan, yeah. I would say, and I will maybe go in with a bold statement here, I would say both of these teams are evenly matched. And, and it's all indicative in the first two games. I mean, there's been ebb and flows of... of pace and uh, runs by both teams in those first two games and it all came down to a few possessions and it came down to which team was able to knock down shots and which team was able to defend and get the stops that they needed to basically win that ball game so it's go probably going to come down to the same situation here this evening and which team's going to you know come up with the big stop when they need it and which team is able to execute on offense when they need it on the other end so I can't see either one of these teams running away from each other and hiding because the London Lightning had an opportunity in game number two to run away and hide with that ball game. I mean, the largest lead that they had in that game, there was 14 lead changes, three ties, and London Lightning's largest lead was 11 minutes, and that was in the third quarter at the 9.34 mark. The Hurricanes' only lead of the night and the largest that they had was seven points, and that happened in the second quarter at the 11:21 mark. So you can see that both teams will make their runs, and there will be an ebb and flow of, you know, type of offense, the offensive pressure going against their defense. So they're going to make their runs, and they're going to get their opportunities to score. But it's just one team. It's a team that makes the right stop at the right situation, and they're able to knock down the shot in a timely fashion that's going to win this game. Second quarter underway here from the Scotia Bank Center alongside Vince Williams. My name is Dan Hobson, the Silver Vision crew, game number three in the ABL Finals. And tough defense there by Renato Dixon, but that's what you get out of him. Led the team in blocks, and he's also very well playing the one-on-one -on -one against some of the bigs against the other teams and came up with this, and now in transition are the Hurricanes. 30 seconds gone. Dixon can also shoot the three, but that rims in and out. Didn't get a lot of arc on it, was more like a dagger. Williamson drives and gets hacked. Yeah, good take there by Williamson off of the transition, off of that long miss. You can see in the replay, good decision by Anderson to push the ball up. As you can see there, he drew the contact on Ronaldo and he'll go to the line to shoot two. So no standing decision in transition by Anderson. Unselfish basketball. Head manning the ball to Williamson, and Williamson rattling the first one out. I'm not sure if he's still feeling the ill effects of that shot to the face there as he sustained a very nasty cut. It looks like inside his mouth, but he's able to bounce back here. Goes two of four now from the stripe. And it's a one possession game, 28 to 25. Quake scales Doug Herring Jr. They know each other pretty well. Pool now, quarter three, yes! There you go, I told you, carry over to the second quarter. You want to see Mike Poole knock down his first shot, and it's good that he was able to see that go in a big situation. Now he has the confidence to keep shooting. Doug Herring Jr. now with the ball, as we just passed the one-minute mark here in the second quarter. Anderson, who's got the hot hand, but it doesn't go that time. And as we mentioned earlier, the defensive all-star team was named today, and Watson was on it. Come up with the ball. Now he gets the return pass from Poole. Minute and a half. Deflects off Phillips, but right into the hands of Dixon. And that hits Ryan Anderson. Seven to shoot now. Poole over Phillips. Yes. Oh, yeah. You can see he's even a little bit cocky and talking afterwards, and rightfully so. 
He's Hurricanes with a three-point lead. An opportunity to play. Didn't play a single minute in game number two, but coming back with some rest, and he is fresh as Mike Poole able to knock down consecutive three balls. I mean, three straight three balls, including the one at the buzzer at the, at the first quarter there. So Mike Poole showing that he's getting that shooting touch. And look out, if he can get hot and start getting it going, along with him and Antoine Mason, it's going to be a juggernaut of a defensive stop for the London Lightning. Oh, and that's a tough call on Mike Poole there. There's a tackle down at the 15-yard line there. <laughs> Boy, I can hear the thud here in this building here at the Scotia Bank Center. A huge collision between these two big men. Does it look like Mike Poole might have got in front of Anderson there and pick up that charging call, but he's called for the block. Marvin Phillips out, and there is this replacement capers now. And boy, he was really out of control with the dribble, and that made it easy there for the Hurricanes to pick the pocket. 9.50 left. Poole's got six points inside. Watson along the in line. And gonna be called. Yeah, good idea by Watson. He was looking for Anthony Cox cutting without the basketball. Good defensive play, good kick ball to bounds and a reset here of 14 seconds on the shot clock for the Canes. Watson was, stop, was thinking about stopping to pop him and then saw that Cox was open and now Cox has got Kadugan trap, but Kadugan breaks it now. Oh, and a nice drop pass, and look at all the passing, and Capers there can't hit. And the weak side rebound by Watson, the nice passing there, a little dipsy do, and the circus was in town, Vince, but unable <laughs> to get the finish. And another yeah. pool three. Yeah, open. That's four straight for Mike Poole. He can he tell you what. His rhythm. He was telling everybody here what it was. It was a three. Yeah, he has found nine. his rhythm. Definitely found his rhythm from beyond the arc. The London Lightning need to make an adjustment defensively and make sure they close out on Mike Poole and run him off that three-point line. Well, if Taquan Zimmer and other lineup, they need some three help, and he's really stepped up here three so far. And that's usually not Mike Poole's game. He's got great mid-range shooter 16 18 feet out that guy can knock down the shots with consistency but he has definitely found his range and his confidence from beyond the arc as he's going to the bench now as antoine mason and washington check back so if you're the london lightning you got to figure out defensively you got to do a thing you got to do a lot, a lot better and not run around on your defensive half court sets and figure out where the immediate threats are, are coming and right now is beyond the arc. It's not the inside game of the Hurricanes. A tied ball here, and possession error in favor of the Halifax Hurricanes. They make a substitution as Joey Haywood will make his way into the game. Friesen and Johnson return for the London Lightning. And Clay Scales will have a seat here. 8.45 left to go, two possession game. Hurricanes, if they can get a bucket here, will have their largest lead of the evening. And that's almost picked off by Capers, but was not able to get the rock. And it'll be Hurricane Ball, 8.44, left to go, 18 to shoot. Dixon to inbound. You know that Joey Haywood's going to bring some energy here to the floor here for the Halifax Hurricanes. Here's Renardo Dixon backing in. Capers and gets the bucket. And they'll take that one-on-one uh, -on -one there because a size advantage in yeah. favor of Dixon. Big time mismatch for Capers trying to guard the bigger man. And Ronaldo Dixon's inside the post. No disrespect to Capers. More of a shooting a small forward. Or if you want to really push it, a power forward is playing undersized here trying to guard one-on-one -on -one with Ronaldo. Ronaldo the gold standing patience spinning towards the middle of the, the lane and he knew that he had the length and the size advantage and he was able to get over top of Capers outstretched arm and finish at the rim. Antoine Mason whistled for the foul his first fourth team foul there for the Halifax Hurricanes. Hurricanes in transition. Here's Mason now. Haywood, Washington, Watson out on the floor as well as Dixon. And a blocking foul, and boy, Cadugan yeah, not too tried. happy with the call. He tried his best to get outside that restricted area, pick up that charge, but the help in the rotation a little late for the London Lightning, 
An outstanding play, splitting the defense, as you can see in the replay here, as Antoine Mason was able to break down the defense, split the defense, and then give it to Watson, cutting without the basketball. Kadugan tried to step inside that restricted area and pick up that charge just a half second late. It gives Watson an opportunity and a couple free throws here. Kadugan second personal, second team foul. Watson, who's uh, from the three throw line, Combined playoffs, regular season, 72%. Hits that one, nine point game. There's an alley-oop, unsuccessful. Friesen with a nice passing lane, but they were unable to get the oop. Haywood, jumper, bounces up and down and doesn't go down, and Washington had a second chance opportunity. Now a third one here for the Hurricanes. And a foul call here by Manny Steets along the far side. Yeah, that was a bad foul there by Capers away from the rim, but he might have thought that he was at a disadvantage as Antoine Mason would have had a free opportunity at a look from beyond the arc or even a pull up at that distance, but Washington totally blew that layup and you don't see him miss many from that distance. Watson back it in on his teammate Friesen. For the former Hurricanes reason. There's a fadeaway jumper there by Washington, and he was off balance putting that shot up. Yeah, that's a tough shot there by Washington. Outstanding defense to push him away from the rim by Royce White. Johnson, bucket. Well, there you go. You can't allow this guy to get hot. Johnson with a good up fake there and stepped through and was able to knock down that three. This is the one guy you cannot let get hot from beyond the arc for the London Lightning. Here's Dixon now for three, yes sir. He's been doing it all year from downtown and did it again, 10 point lead, largest here for the Hurricanes this evening. Well I tell you what, Ronaldo Dixon is a tough person to defend because you don't know what you're gonna get from him. He can score, but it's inside the bass, side the rim, is tough jump shot there by Kyle Johnson. Back and he can also hit that shot from beyond the arc. And you've called many of threes, and you're surprised that he takes them, but he's among the league leaders in percentage at 43% through the regular season, so he's no stranger shooting that shot from beyond the arc. Five and a half gone here in quarter number two. Mason puts up. The three. Wow, it's Boy, really it's making it difficult there for the London Lightning if Dixon's getting three, Pools are getting Pools getting three, and Mason's getting three. Yeah, the adjustment definitely needs to be made defensively. Royce Wright gets an easy one off of Kyle Johnson Royce. miss. But I mean they're eleven for twenty from downtown of the Halifax Hurricanes, and they are lighting the lamps from that distance. If this hot shooting continues throughout this game, then they might run away with this one. Well, also, too, they, when they were doing the head-to-head -head stats before the playoff final round between these two teams started, there was a three-point advantage in favor of the Halifax Hurricanes. Just a slight one, but boy, the threes are just raining here for the defending champions. As you see, Dixon the, talk about the big three, walk off there to the bench as we have a timeout on the floor with 5.52 left, and it is a 43-34 basketball game here for the Halifax Hurricanes and uh, it was a tough stretch so we haven't had a chance to really talk about it is that the Hurricanes uh, of course uh, clinched the uh, Atlantic Division final in Charlottetown right then had to get on a make their way to London for games one and two right and then they had a difficulty trying to get home here just got oh, yeah. in yesterday and that's a long stretch on the road, and boy, they're not showing that uh, any fatigue from that sort of type of trip. Yeah, Road Warriors. I mean, they're getting dubbed the Road Warriors on social media. I mean, they definitely had an opportunity to speak to Coach Mike Leslie after the game, and he, he talked about how important it was to get back to Halifax, to get back into the friendly confines of the Halifax, uh, the, the, the Halifax Regional Municipality and, and sleep in their own beds, you know, and eat their own food and not eat the hotel food and not be on the road. As you mentioned, they went straight from uh, Charlottetown to London for this championship finals, and they really haven't been back to Halifax since game number, uh, number uh, uh, three, that is, in the Atlantic Division Championship. So game number two, excuse me, the Atlantic Division Championship. So. They haven't seen the friendly confines of Halifax, so coming back and being able to do what they're doing thus far is magnificent right now, but they need to continue this shooting because the London Lightning are going to make a run at some point in this game. 
their shooters are going to show up. Royce White not in the ball game offensively thus far. Very slow start for him on the evening. But you got to know that at some point of this game, Royce White is going to get his opportunities and his touches to be effective offensively. Back to play we are, 43 to 34. 544 left to go here. Until halftime, spinning and shooting. Mason there with the clock winding down. And yeah. Goaltending is going to be called. Ryan Anderson was trying to tap it and almost tapped it in and then sort of tapped away. Are they going to call it goaltending? So I'm not sure if they're going to count that or not, but it doesn't look like they changed the score. But I think no, that's they're not too happy about it. Like no, nope, that is a legal play. But it looked like he did put his hand inside the cylinder to knock away. But in this league, in this rule, there is a rule such: if it's a rattling around the cylinder, you can knock it away. The defender can, as long as he doesn't put his hand through and up through the cylinder. Oh, jam city there by White. Yeah, right on Royce cue. White. Royce White getting away from the defense. A defensive breakdown for the Hurricanes. White wide open. You can't allow him two feet away from the rim and he'll jam it on anybody in this league and he was just able to do that up and over the defense. Dixon too strong on that one just at this time we're going to remind the fans watching back home that we are in the uh, second row press row so sometimes we get blocked out on what we can see at court side so we just want to mention that right now. White looking for another one rejected but that was only just a short time as he had a chance and Puts it up and in, and starting to get going is White. Back-to-back -back buckets. Haywood jumper from the elbow, good. 45 to 38. So Halifax definitely has to be careful right now as Royce White has continued to go to work. They're gonna try to feed the beast. White back it in on Dixon. Loose ball, and it's gonna be gathered there by Johnson. Puts it up, falls down, and that doesn't go. Tap to Mason now. Antoine Mason now with Haywood off the window and in. Great decision in transition by Mason. Unselfish basketball and Haywood able to finish off the window. So good transition play there for the Hurricanes. Anderson going to be hacked and have a chance to knock him down from the stripe. We take a look at the replay. As you can see here, he was able to break down the defense there of Bowen get into the body of Bowen there, had no way to go. Looked like Bowen might have had good defensive positioning there straight up, but it looks like he might have reached over just a little bit, and Anderson was able to bail himself out and get himself to the free throw line. So great awareness offensively on that take by Anderson. Anderson, this first free throw, so he's one of one tonight. And for Hurricanes, Bowen, his first foul, 15 foul, and drains a second one. Seven point game, coming up to four to go till halftime. Series tied at one. First to three from the Scotiabank Center. White backing in on Maurice Bolden. He's been kind of quiet in this series. Haywood with the jumper that's short. And Bowen comes up with it and a new 24. And Haywood settles the troops down and says, let's be patient and use as much clock as we can. Oh. A little bit of a hot pass, but Mason was right there to recover. The clock at 10 now. Cadogan covering him. Forced it. There's Cadogan, and that was going to be called for the goal, 10. Yeah, that's the right call. The ball was definitely coming down off the, ba off the backboard. That's the right call. But Mason forcing that pass. The hurricane force is noisy and not in a good mood. Yeah, well, I don't think many people are in a good mood when it comes to the officiating in the building right now, if you're either team. But it definitely looked like, from my vantage point, it was the right call. The ball looked like it was coming down off the backboard. Mason thought about popping, drives, and then the trees came over and denied that one. The defense collapsed just in the nick of time, under three left here. And an offensive foul. This one's going against Maurice Bolden, will be his first. And for the London Lightning, fourth team foul. Yeah, Bolden just Fifth, ejected me. into the game and a great defensive play there as he was able to block that shot attempt by Antoine Mason, but not a good screen set on the offensive end, so a missed opportunity for the London Lightning to cut into this lead. Both teams have five team fouls. 2.46 left. 
Billy White backs in, and that's an offensive foul. And well, he makes up for it on the defensive end. He's really able to sacrifice his body and take that blunt force of Billy White, as you can see in the replay. That's his Hit him second. once, and then he was yeah. able to get away. He got away with it the first time, Dan, but he yeah. didn't get away with the second time as he was able to barrel right straight and square in the chest of Bolden. Williamson, and right there was White there, deny the shot. Cadogan now with the shot clock at 10, inside the paint. Williamson was in the area as well. Ryan Anderson outside the arc. They'll have to put it up quickly, clock at two. That's no good. And a 24 second shot clock violation called against the Lightning. Yeah, you can just see the London Lightning just out of sorts there on that possession. A lot of individual basketball there, not a lot of spacing and movement of the basketball. Didn't look like they were trying to get the ball inside the Royce Wright, who's been very successful in the last three minutes individually against his defender. So they're going away from that, and I'm not sure if you're the Lightning if you want to do that, because they've gotten into this ball game by giving the ball to Royce White and feeding the beast. He is the MVP. Watson stops and pops, and there's no good. There is the re, uh, MVP from this year, Royce White. Back outside, Cadogan now under two to go here till halftime. The home crowd pretty happy with what they see on the scoreboard. 47 to 42, Williamson, wild shot, but Royce White put back in bucket. You talked about him getting going and just on cue, boy, he's starting to all of a sudden make uh, his presence known, 10 points. 4 of 10 from the field. Yeah, he was 0 for 4 in that first quarter. Looked like he was frustrated when he was substituted out of the game, but he's come back with the vengeance. Didn't run a, they didn't run the play for him last, last time down, but he, did, he got himself in great position to rebound the offensive rebound and get the easy putback. This is one of the stories is that the Hurricanes are out rebounding as Bowen with a deep two. Makes it 49 to 44 as we are coming up to one minute to go here until halftime. Anderson, defense, Mason. Defense, Boulder comes up, sets the screen. Not used. Defense, White, Dixon, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, just a nice move and gets by Dixon. And he has no choice but to foul the big man and send him to the stripe. Yeah, you can take a look at the replay here. Royce White feeling the contact. The quick first move there. Nice spin move on the baseline as he was able to gain the spacing and the separation on Royce, on, excuse me, on Ronaldo, and go to the line to shoot too. And that's what Royce Wright does. He's an outstanding offensive player with his back towards the basket. The Hurricanes gotta do, gotta make a decision whether they're gonna trust that man individually to play one-on-one -on -one with Royce Wright, or they're gonna double team him late and force Royce Wright to come up with a good pass. Short on the second one, of course, uh Anybody would like to, there's an interesting article again on Royce White, and it's on Esquire. It was a good read. And of course, it talks about uh, mental health. There's a shot there to, for Bowen that doesn't go. Yeah, Bowen, 30 seconds to shot. go. Wide open shot. He's got to knock down that shot. And we've seen this several times throughout this ball game where it looks like the London Lightning are collapsing inside the paint and allowing certain guys to shoot that shot from beyond the arc. This is a make or miss league. Professional basketball is a make or miss situation. You gotta knock down those shots when you're given that opportunity. And that was a wide open shot for Aaron Bowen. He's probably not gonna be the last shot he's gonna get from that distance this evening. So he's gotta do better and knock down that wide open opportunity. Two seconds difference between the game clock, shot clock, and for the London Lightning, they do have a foul to give. Haywood now with the clock at three. Poole will put it up, and that's no good. As tapped around and gets out to the arc, and Royce White puts up a wild shot to end this first half. And as you can hear, as the London Lightning and Hurricanes make their way to the dressing rooms, a Happy Scotia Bank Center crowd sees the home team up by five after the opening 24 minutes. So we're gonna take a break here and we're gonna be back in about 14, 15 minutes with third quarter action here from the Scotia Bank Center. Once again, the score to Halifax Hurricanes 49, the London Lightning 44. Back in 14 here on NBL Canada YouTube.
against those two bigs and double team them and force them into making tough passes and tough decisions, passing the basketball or forcing tough shots out of that double team. If they're able to do that, then they continue to stay close in this game and relatively be in a position to win the game down the stretch. And that's a nice give and go off of that screen, that backdoor cut by Royce White, picking up where he left off in that second quarter. Can't let Royce White get a wide open look, especially in the start of the third quarter. That's unexcusable defensively by the Hurricanes. Gives him 12. Hurricanes with their first possession here of the second half. White driving, lost it, but Washington, right place, right time, and puts it up and in. But they're making an assertive effort to get the ball to Billy, and Billy had an opportunity, got it knocked away. CJ in the right position at the right time. And another and defensive breakdown there on that the possession as well as Garrett Williamson moving without the basketball, was able to break down the defense and get behind the defense to get an opportunity. And Billy, got to his. that's his third. So Billy not in really foul difficulty thus far, but if he picks up his second, sorry, excuse me, his fourth and his second in this quarter, and you'll probably see Billy go to the bench, and that's not good. Williamson struggling there from the stripe. It's two of five now as he misses that one. And we hate to say it's because of the effects of the, that shot he took in the face, but it's got to be in the back of his mind. 50% from the stripe as he gets out with three of six now. Four-point game. You can see the frustration as he shook his head as he went down the end of the court there after he knocked down that free throw. Yeah, he's had like you know, pretty well six games, back-to-back -back double figures and points against right. the Hurricanes. Uh, you take into the playoffs and regular season as well as the two playoff games last year. Yeah, he's been very good. Ooh, what a nice little backhand there by Royce White. Yeah, I'm not sure who's checking Royce White right now, but it looks like nobody is because that is back-to-back -back possessions where Royce White is basically running down the middle of the key, wide open without the basketball and the Lightning are finding him wide open and he's making them pay and finishing at the rim. Watson with the take and Washington there puts the garbage in, 55 to 49. Nice work there by Watson along the inline. Henderson sways it over the corner, Johnson open look for three and misses everything. And Clank scales right there to gather it up for the Hurricanes. And not a good night shooting thus far for Kyle Johnson. Can't find his range here at Scotia Bank Center. Numbers the other way. Kaduga, can he get the shot off? Yes, he does. And that's a smart play by yeah. Watson. You would have probably think about taking the foul, but it was going to get the bucket anyway. It could have caused the N1, which we've seen sometimes in this league as well, Vince. Easy run out there by Kaduga. An outstanding body control and finish at the rim. You can see the London Lightning are looking to push the basketball and be very as aggressive attacking the rim in this quarter. And Kaduga, but well defended. And he stepped on the end line, but couldn't get the finish. Back-to-back yeah. -back steals there by the London Lightning. Well, the contact and the uh, the physical play continuing this third quarter, and the officiating continuing to be consistent there. There's lots of contact going towards the rim by Kadugan, and, and an unlucky opportunity grabbing that second chance was Kyle Johnson. And that's the 13th offensive rebound for the Lightning. They only had 10 in game number two at home, so the Hurricanes not doing a good job give it, limiting the one and duns here in this game. Goes out of bounds and it will stay with the London Lightning. So you, know, you were saying about the rebounding, it's a little bit better as you mentioned for them. So far so. And a little bit of a better, definitely second half. They seem to be, you know, as you say, limiting the Hurricanes to one and duns as White there with the Hand signals, but they'll just throw it out to Anderson outside the arc who drains it. Had a good first quarter, quite there in the second, but starting off with a three here in the third, and it's a one-point game. Yeah, he's got 15 on the evening, and leaving, leaving off where, like you mentioned, in the first quarter, it was all Anderson. In the second quarter, it carried over to the bigs, and Royce White got into the action. So the two-headed monster starting to fire on all cylinders for the Lightning. Speaking of a two-headed monster, there's Washington, big man, and can shoot from outside. Getting that three, 58 to 54. Anderson, quarter three, he's got one in his back pocket. Actually, it's a deep two, pardon me, according to referee John Hunt. 58-56. Knocked away, knocked out of 
bounce there by Washington as the help came late. As you can see, the double team as they were they wanted to trust Williamson to play him straight up, but it looked like Williamson couldn't take him. And he came with that double team late, and CJ was unable to handle that double team, and he knocked it out of bounds off himself. See that the London Lightning maybe have found their legs here. White, oh. two-handed flush, well, I tell you and what, it's a tie game. They found something, and it's probably going to force a time out call here by Coach Mike Leslie to try to regroup and make some defensive adjustments. That is three straight buckets straight down the middle of the key for Royce White as he finishes at the rim with a two-handed hammer. Can't allow Royce White those easy opportunities. If you're going to make it tough, you got to make it tough on White. you got to decide whether you're going to double-team him or play him straight up, but you can't play nobody on him. White lost the rock there. Four to shoot, goes out of bounds. It will stay with the Hurricanes, but boy, they have a small clock to work with. 7.43 as you see Billy White to go here in the third, yeah. two to shoot. They need to find some answers right now. Right now, the Hurricanes have none coming out of this halftime break. Looking like they're standing in cement right now, not going anywhere as the Lightning are continuing to attack them. Mesa with an off balance shot. White had it momentarily off his fingertips, but right in the hand of White, who hands it to Ryan Anderson now, who's guarded there by Billy White. Stops, pops, and gets the bucket, and it's a lead for the London Lightning. They had a little bit of a lead there early in the first quarter. Yeah. The Hurricanes' 10 point lead has gone by the wayside, and now they're behind the eight ball. Watson, bucket, and one. Need more of that, need more of Clint Scales breaking down his defender and breaking down the defense inside that paint and making outstanding decisions. As you can see there, he got stuck there. Good play defensively by Johnson. A little bit late coming across the key there was Anderson as Watson was able to finish through the contact, but they need Clint Scales to continue to be aggressive with the basketball and make decisions with the basketball because right now they're in a dogfight. The London Lightning came out of the locker room like a house on fire, and they are feeding the bees, and Royce Wright is going to work right now. The MVP of the league here. Oh, nice move by Clint Scales, but unable to get the finish. But a nice move, and you can see what he's got lots of talent. Be interesting what happens after this season is done. And that's what they need. As they need Clint Scales to be the general and step up in this quarter to weather this storm. And Royce White just threw the basketball into the front row of the, <laughs> the stands. And well, no if, you have, if the basketball thing late. doesn't work out, he could be a football player quarterback. Well, it came late. As you take a look at the replay here, Clint Scales breaking down the defense behind the back, split the defense. Nice, beautiful, no look pass to Watson. He was able in transition here. Kadugan loses him in space. And Williamson unable to guard. Watson, illegal screen on White, and White just hurls that ball That's into the first row. That's a pretty impressive pass. <laughs> you being a football guy, man. Wow, he hit the wide open man. I guess you he's being an to official, that was a sweet pass. Unfortunately, oh. wrong sport. Beautiful form, though. Yeah. Beautiful form, as you can see in the replay by White. Yeah, but what it's done but there was is nobody put him open the down that yeah, distance, there, though. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody in a, in a red blocks jersey there to catch that one, Vince. Yeah, well, White you know very frustrated about, about that moving screen call. There but he he's got to stay in the game. He's been very effective in this third quarter. Well, now is the chance because he's on the bench here as they're trying to yep. settle him down. He's got two fouls, but this means the Hurricanes have got to, you know, they gotta take go advantage inside. of it. They got to go inside. They got to work the ball inside some kind of way. Washington, corner three. Well, don't listen Runs to me. Let's play and B. Don't listen to me. Definitely play and B as Washington knocks down his second three ball from the same spot on the evening. Off to the races. Clay scales. No look. One hand. Billy White. And all of a sudden, the Scotia Bank Center standing up and they are awake. Wow. Lob One City. hand jam. You seen it coming. It was being dictated in the pace, and Clint Scales and Billy White just have that type of premonition. They don't need to say much to each other, just know where each other are on the court. Two-handed flush, Billy White. Yeah, things are coming undone. White, White got in behind the play because he went for the steal and slipped, 
And all of a sudden, the lightning missed. Hurricane saw him wide open, off to the races, and down it went. Let's look at it. You can see there, the old standing look. No There's look the one pass. hand. One handed jam. <laughs> Clint Scales frees the defense with the hesitation in transition. Not enough defensive push in transition coming up. Too much space for Clint Scales in that run out. And another beautiful run out as Billy White wide open behind the defense of the London Lightning and forces a timeout call by Coach Kyle Julius as he tries to regroup and try to make some adjustments to that run out in the runs. I and mean, I told you the runs are going to come by both teams. And right now, the Hurricanes are in the midst of a run right now as they're getting some easy opportunities at the goal. But it's all set up by the guard play. The guard play by their general, the man that has been basically taking this team by the bull, by the horns all season long, led the league in assists, additional timely assists just in the midst of the London Lightning coming back and battling, coming uh, overcoming that double-digit deficit and taking the lead. And that timely moving screen called on Royce White and White getting teed up for throwing the ball into the first row wasn't a good decision by White as he was playing outstanding in the start of this third quarter. So the flow and the momentum in the hands right now of the Hurricanes but look to see if the London Lightning can rebound coming out of this timeout and make the adjustments. But White's got to keep his head. He's the MVP for a reason because he was able to play through these type of adversities and be very good for this team that has the best record in the National Basketball League of Canada, the best home record, the best road record. But right now they are struggling to find a leader right now and they need a leader to take control of this game if they're going to stay close with the Hurricanes because right now they are running away with it and Cliff Clint Scales is the catalyst and the reason why they are out in front. We talk about Clint Scales, only three points but a big 10 assist here and two rebounds. He is, as Vince mentioned, the floor general doing it here this evening here from the Scotia Bank Center. Anderson, who's pretty hot-handed, can't get that one to go. Has 19, seven to nine from the field. We have a whistle stopping play here. As the ball goes out of bounds. 541 left to go. And London Lightning's ball, Doug Herring Jr. Now, this is the time when you need some veterans, but the easy inbound to Ryan Anderson. Whoa, defensive break down there. Easy bucket, Herring, Anderson, bucket. And that quiets things down for the meantime, 70 to 62. Mike Scales has a screen set up here by Washington. Mason driving into the paint. Swatted away by Anderson. Three on two. Back the other way. Bolded. Herring Jr. looking for the pass. And it goes out of bounds. And it's Hurricanes basketball. Yeah. A three on two. And they don't get a shot. Yeah, missed opportunity. Empty trip in that transition. A much needed bucket that they needed. Bolden just lost the handle on that three on two. Couldn't decide whether he was going to pass it or shoot it. So an opportunity now to push the lead back up the double digits here for the Canes. Watson with five to go. Tough take, a lot of contact there. Nothing called. Herring Jr. with the ball. He's going to wait for numbers as it was odd numbers the other way. Herring Jr., the former Mill Rat, takes a strong one on two. Can't hit. And White comes up with it. And now he'll go end to end. Pops puts the brakes on. Mason, three. Yes. <laughs> Unselfish basketball by Billy in transition. Had the opportunity to pull up at the free throw line and knock down the jumper, but he knew he had numbers coming back the other way. Mason with the spot up and the knockdown from beyond the arc. Beautiful play in transition and outstanding decision by Billy White. Largest lead of the evening here for the Hurricanes, 11. In the meantime, Watson is whistled for his second personal foul, second team foul here in the third quarter as we take a look at Doug Herring, Jr., He's been in these uh, pressure cookers before, so he's a veteran here in this league. And the meantime, John Hunt calls a quick foul on the inbound play. It's gonna be the third team foul there for the Hurricanes, and Watson called for his third. Yeah, it looked like Watson got a little bit too physical with Friesen. Friesen might have embellished that shot in the back as he was moving without the basketball. And Watson not happy with that type of call here as there's been a lot of physical play throughout this game. Things not called and things letting go. 
And a lead pass up ahead, white by Friesen, and oh. Friesen fouls him, and whoa, here uh, we go. Keep his Things head. starting to get a little nasty. Yeah, Billy not happy at all, and Billy all season long, you can see he's not one to step down from a challenge, and it was an outstanding play by Billy. You can see in the replay here, great as a hesitation as he throws Friesen off the dribble drive with that left hand. Now there's probably... Mason coming in to step to Billy and saying, Billy, I'll just calm down, just continue to play. We got the lead here. Just keep your head. Let's knock down the free throws and go up back down the other end and play some defense. Well, two reasons why he did that. Number one, of course, he was upset. So I was a little bit too hard. But number two, maybe try to get something in Freeze's head to say, well, you know, maybe intimidate him so he doesn't try that oh, yeah. later on. So it's, a, you know... Two reasons why you do it. And well, we've seen all season long, Billy never steps down from a challenge, and he's always going to step up. 12, chance to make it 13 point, and it is 75 to 62. And all of this with White on the bench, and as Vince mentioned earlier in the broadcast, as soon as White threw that ball well into the stands, things have turned around. And that's a good jump shot off the screen there by Kyle Johnson. He needs to get things going. Having a slow night, an outstanding night in game number two, but he needs to be good in this third and fourth quarter if they're going to give himself a chance to get back into this. Was an entry pass inside of Washington, had difficulty second and third times, and ended up being fouled there by Maurice Bolden. Now Bolden will have a seat as Marcus Capers will come in. As you can see in the replay there, the push by Bolden in the back as there was a scramble for the loose ball. And CJ did a good job of corralling and catching that. Four to go here in the third quarter. Watson calling for movement. Mason with the ball, the sixth man of the NBL. Watson takes and foul before the shot. Should be going against Doug Herring Jr. And it is. And for the London Lightning, that's their sixth personal foul, and there's 3.50 left to go. Two quick foul calls on this possession on the London Lightning, not moving their feet defensively. But the Hurricanes trying to play into the mismatches on speed and strength inside, so look to see if they get the ball back inside the Billy as they try to go to work on Phillips. They're no look, they're a little bit too far out of the reach of White, but he does retrieve it. Clock at two, White. Off the window and in. Yeah, just too easy. The defensive switch was at the advantage of the Hurricanes as a smaller man and Herring Jr. had no choice but to play Billy straight up. And he's just not going to win that battle. Nice move by Friesen, though, with the right hand. Friesen ahead, just only three points. We'll give him five now. An 11-point game. 3.15 left, 77-66. Washington double team, passed it, put it right into the hands of Johnson who's fouled before he could get a shot off. And it's going against Clint Scales, be his first. So the Lightning looking for some answers here to finish out this quarter and try to bring this lead back to single digits and give themselves an opportunity staying relatively close here into the fourth. They gotta do a better job of executing offensively and knock down some of these shots and take advantage of these turnovers. Friesen. And that's another nice take there off Joel the Friesen. dribble by Joel Friesen. So Friesen starting to heat up there, Dan. Yeah, and the Hurricanes thought there was a travel, but of course the three-man officiating crew of Hanson, States, and Hunt says not so much. Play continues on, 2.40 left to go in the third. Watson. Once again, trying to go through two jerseys, and that doesn't work out. Good defensive play there by Capers. Friesen stops, puts it up, and it's no good. That was definitely the heat check the from One and done. Not sure if that was the right shot in transition. Might have wanted to get into their half-court set where they've been pretty successful in consecutive possessions. White on Capers. We've seen this matchup, and it really wasn't in favor of the London Lightning then. See how it goes now, but... Hurricanes get a shot that's no good and a weak side rebound by Johnson. Coming up to two to go. Along the end line, short hits the rim. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be London's basketball, 15 to shoot. Poole and Anthony Cox return as Washington will have a breather as well as Watson. As the Scotiabank Center crowd show their appreciation for the effort of Washington and Watson. And Joey Haywood also returning right now. 
Yeah, the bench scoring's been outstanding this evening for the Hurricanes with a 10 point advantage, 22 to, to 12 compared to the Lightning. So the second unit has done a good job thus far for the Hurricanes. Harry Jr. just keeps it on his side of the half. Four to shoot, he'll put it up, fakes, try to get contact against Poole. Too strong, and Billy White right there on the weak side to gather it up, 100 seconds left to go in the third. Haywood giving Clink Scales a little bit of a rest here. Mason now, wide open look, oh, lost the rock, and Mervyn Phillips <laughs> lost the rock, but right there was Doug Herring Jr. He has the ball now with 80 seconds left to go. Phillips sets the screen. Capers, jumper for three, too strong. And Haywood gets a little bit of it, but not enough. But White right there for the Hurricanes. So sometimes you're good to be lucky, lucky to be good in the spots. Yeah, a lot of one pass shooting for the London Lightning. Not sure if that's part of the game plan, but a lot of quick shots in the, early in their uh, shot clock in their half court set. They might want to work the ball over and try to move the defense. Haywood too strong. Tips off a couple of fingertips. And a nice piece of work there by Capers. He called Johnson, let him know the ball was coming. Johnson turned around and looked in just in the nick of time. Now Herring Jr. has the ball. Elbow jumper, too strong. And one and done. And yep, you said about of, the shot a selection. A lot of one-on-one, a lot of one-on-one -on -one play. Not a lot of ball movement, not a lot of ball screens, not a lot of movement without the basketball. So, I mean, it's all a lot of individual play. And they're playing right into the hands of the defensive strategy for the Hurricanes. Harry. If the defense doesn't move and doesn't have to work, and all they need to do is rebound the basketball, then you're playing right into your opponent. And right now, that's the way the Lightning are playing their Lightning offensive sets. Herring Jr. called for the harm there. And as we mentioned, that's a penalty right now. So White to shoot. Two from the three throw line. So by the time that these two three throws are done here, as White sinks the first one, and the game clock and shot clock pretty well in sync here. Hurricanes do have a couple of fouls to give. It's a 10 point lead, 78 to 68. Chance to make it 11, and does. And you can see the appreciative crowd loving the effort here this evening here in Halifax. Aaron Bowen will come in and Mason will have a little bit of a breather here with just, as I mentioned, 24 seconds left to go in this third quarter. Yeah, after a very slow first 24 minutes for Billy White, he has rebounded in this third quarter. Finished the quarter with three points, was one for three from the field of playing 14 minutes. And he's done an outstanding job in this third. Phillips spins and shoots and gets it to go. Four seconds get left here and uh, Hurricanes trying to get something going here before the end, but unsuccessful as they just inbounded, and the horn goes to end the third quarter. In 36 minutes, Vince are in the books here from the Scotiabank Center, and it's a nine-point game, 79-70 to 70 for the defending champions. That was a huge shot there by Phillips at the buzzer to end the third quarter. I mentioned it several times. If they can just get this lead down the single digits, entering the fourth quarter. That'll give themselves an opportunity to win this game going down the stretch. They couldn't afford to enter the fourth quarter in double digits and playing the way that they're playing. The things that they need to continue to clean up is their offense. Right now, their offense is struggling to shoot from the field. I mean, it's it's 47%, but it's not a strong 47%. 23 for 48. The shots that they're taking and the way that they're taking the shots are not great looks I mean one of a lot of individual play a lot of one pass and shooting early in the shot clock when they're moving the basketball and able to move the defense and get the open lanes and open to, and open up those drive lanes and get opportunities for other guys to shoot open shots and work the ball inside then they've been successful in that third quarter they got away from that but it all came from the Royce White incident I mean Royce White getting upset at the officiating on a moving screen that he was called for. He the ball into the front row there behind the, 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 the fans that are sitting on the, on the baseline here. And uh, he just lost his composure and had no choice. Lord but, of the Rings? You know, 
put Royce White on the bench to gain his composure. Avatar. But if Royce White is who he is, and that's the MVP, and that's your leader, he's rebounded from that devastation of that last six minutes, and he's able to refocus himself and get back to the great basketball that he was playing before he exited the game. But if you're the Hurricanes, you gotta Frozen. just continue to do what you're doing. Continue to work the basketball inside, work that inside-outside game, make sure that the passes that are coming from the inside are good passes, they're not lob passes and court passes where there's an opportunity to get hands in passing lanes and go back the other way. Continue to knock down shots and continue to do what you're doing defensively and forcing the tough shots by the Lightning and getting those one and dones and racing back the other way in transition and finishing at the rim with easy opportunities. Well, we have an interesting 12 minutes coming your way as we take a look at some of the bare-chested uh, fans in the stands here on a Tuesday night. They got a nice tan, I have to say. <laughs> well, Definitely a lot better than mine. I've been in a few buildings, and I think this is the only one where the kids decide whenever they're on the Jumbotron, they're going to take their T-shirts off and wave it above their head. That ah, goes out of bounds. And 15 seconds gone here and a turnover and London Lightning with that big shot as Vince mentioned there just before the break here with that bucket there to bring it down to single digits. Anderson, big game here he's had. Williamson, he's also had success in bucket. So that's what you're saying. Get they were doing moving. a lot of shots and you know, yep. not really a lot of team play, but that one was that time. Yeah, good ball movement, open up those drive lanes and Williamson moving without the basketball was able to get to the rim and finish at the rim. So those are the type of att attempts that they need to continue to have if they're gonna get this one relatively close. Royce White back out on the floor, so the people back home in London must be happy about that. Bowen with the clock winding down, That's a gets tough an shot. air ball and it will be London basketball and that is just what the doctor needed. They got a bucket and they yeah. got a stop and now they have a chance here. Yeah. Yeah. To bring it down to four if they yeah. can shoot the three. And it looks like uh, Coach Leslie didn't waste any time in inserting some of the starters here back into the lineup as he wasn't going to waste any time waiting for these guys to figure it out. He had no choice. The first five minutes, six minutes are very important in this quarter if they're going to continue to get this lead. As you can see, the Lightning are trying to get a push here and go on a little bit of their own mini run to get back into this ball game as Royce White is injected back into the ball game. And you gotta think that he's gonna try to make amends for that technical that he, he had in that third quarter. It just may start to get him going. Anderson going down and hitting the three and words for the official along the sideline, John Hunt to boot. And as I mentioned, four point game, 79 to 75. He's been good all night, 22 points for Ryan Anderson. Four for six from downtown. Eight for 10, 11, excuse me, from the field. Definitely rebounding from the shooting woes of game number two and making amends this evening is Ryan Anderson. You can see this guy really wants to win this one and game back home court advantage for the Lightning. All right, you remember how everybody was jumping up and down and sh really boisterous here at the Scotia Bank Center for Billy White's back-to-back -back jams. It's kind of hushed down now. Four point game, making a two point game. There it as is. a judge jam there by Marcus Capers. The decisions to make the move, attacking the rim, and guys moving without the basketball has opened up their half court offense. In that third quarter, around, you know, for five minutes, guys are just standing around, one pass shooting, and nobody attacking the rim, and nobody moving without the basketball. But the adjustment has been made offensively. Now, let's see if this can be continuous and consistent here she throughout the fourth. Chance for a tie or the lead, but it's gonna be the tie yeah. as White inside to yeah. Anderson. And, and all of a sudden, you could hear a pin drop here at the Scotia Bank Center, 79 to 79. As this thing's like going up and down like a teeter-totter on a Tuesday night. Struggling, struggling right now defensively are the Hurricanes. It's coming right down the middle of the key. Now that was uh, basically the trend before Royce White exited this game after that technical where he was able to get down the middle of the key three consecutive possessions. And just we just had three consecutive possessions to start the fourth quarter 
where the Lightning and Lightning were able to break down their defense, break down the double team, make sure that they could maintain control of the basketball, and the man without the basketball, cutting without it, making a conscious decision to get down the middle of the key, catch it, and finish at the rim. Right now, the defense adjustment needs to be made by the Hurricanes. They gotta trust each other. They gotta trust each other individually to stay in front of their man and their defensive responsibility. Right now, there's no defensive responsibilities by the Hurricanes, and this is the reason why we have a tie ball game, 79-79. Canes, no points in this quarter. The, uh, the London Lightning on a 9-0 run, and it's looking like it's gonna be a little bit more if they don't stop the bleeding that is of the Halifax Hurricanes. Well, it's kind of amazing that uh, in this series so far is that a team has had like a lead in the fourth, but they have been unable to sustain it. Can't sustain it. I mean, it's double digit leads and we spoke about it early in this third quarter. We talked about the multiple lead changes from game number two. Uh, there was 14 lead changes. Three times they were tied and the London Lightning led late in the, sorry, early in the third quarter by 11 points at the 934 mark. The only lead for the Hurricanes at the second quarter around the 11-21 mark, and that was a seven-point lead. Crucial stages here, fourth quarter. Mason puts it up and no good as it hit the outside of the rim. Outlet, Williamson, jam! And the 9-0 run is now an 11-0 run. Yes, huge jam in transition. Outstanding run out for the London Lightning and aggressive attacking the rim and we got a little stoppage of plays a collision between capers and watson but right now the hurricanes are reeling and trying to find an answer and trying to find that magic from that third quarter so they got to recapture their composure here and make some adjustments on the fly because right now they're being outplayed by the lightning capers called for his far foul first team foul here in the fourth Hurricanes, after a big lead, has gone by the wayside. Playing scales to Watson now. Coming up to three, gone here in the fourth quarter. Mason, hot first half. Does he have anything left in the tank here in the second with the shot clock at three? Clank scales inside. And they're gonna call the shot clock violation. So another stop defensively for the Lightning and an opportunity to extend this lead. So they have picked up the tempo and turned up the intensity here, and Halifax is yet to match that intensity in this fourth quarter. The clock was wide to Vince. I think maybe Clay Scales would have been more selfish to shot it. Cadugan layup. Great decision off the dribble drive there by Cadugan, attacking the rim and finishing. White double team there by Royce White, back outside to Clay Scales, is watched by Capers. He's got four fouls on him. Washington for three, no, Billy White right there to new 24. And a jump ball. And this is how things go, is that if you need a, something to turn the tide when you're not having any luck from hitting it in the field. You get a jump ball, but the possession arrow in favor of London. Four point game and a chance to make it a seven point game. Yeah, good close out as Capers was able to get Billy White tied up forced that jump ball as the help came late and it came quick for the Lightning. White, second chance opportunity, could hit on the first one. And now he'll have a chance to knock him down from the stripe. Boy, you talk about when White was in, it was... Day and night. Yeah, it was day and night. And then when he was out, Hurricanes went on the run. Back into the game in the fourth. And all of a sudden, you know, look at it now. It's a four-point game and a chance to make it six here from the stripe here for the big man. As you mentioned, the former Houston Rocket property and in you the can NBA. See he is important. He is very important to the success of this team. I mean, this guy brings a lot to the table. He's not the MVP for, for no reason. It's the reason why he's the MVP because he's a leader out there. Lost his head momentarily in that third quarter. Looked like it was very uncharacteristic. Maybe a frustration play, but he's rebounded and his team has responded. And we're still waiting for the Hurricanes to respond. If they're not gonna respond here, the London Lightning will run away in this fourth quarter and steal game number three. Defending champions need to ring the bell, but they're giving up once again. Anderson, Williamson, tapped from oh, White over to Capers. That is Boy, beautiful. you just know no options there. They had so many people to guard, and 
bucket there for the London Lightning. That is unselfish, beautiful basketball in transition. The ball never hit the floor once it got into the paint. The good shots were given up for better shots. And Watson finally ends the bleeding for the meantime. But it's a six point game, but that's a big bucket. 16-0 run before that basket. And White trying to start it there with the one-handed hammer. Make it an 18, the two, two run for the London Lightning. As Royce White continuing to get easy opportunities and dunks at the rim, not being forced away from the basket, no answer defensively. The Hurricanes have for Royce White thus White far. Called for the foul, it'll be his third, and the Hurricanes are hoping that this media timeout comes a little quicker. Boy, it's you know we're seconds away from it, but you know how do you how do you end it? You already called a timeout earlier, and you've already you play the media coming up defensively. In. You got to play defensively responsible. You got to figure out what kind of defense you want to play, whether it's man to man or zone. But you need to pick up the intensity on the defensive side of things because right now they're getting run out the building. 18 to two run is unexcusable in your own building in a championship finals in game number three with an opportunity to take a commanding two to one lead with two ball games left here at home knowing that if you win those two, you're the champion. You win back to back championships. Right now, the, the focus needs to be turned around for the Hurricanes if they're gonna try to get back into this one. Right now, the London Lightning are doing what they do, and that's come into opposition's buildings and win ball games. And it looked very bleak in that third quarter when the Hurricanes took a 10 point lead and upped it to 12. But since then, since the end of that third quarter, and I mentioned that was a very important shot by Marvin Phillips to knock down that jump shot and make sure that that lead was a single digits and not double digits because it does things to your mental aspect, the mental psyche. If you're down double digits, there's a there's a situation where you might think that this thing might be unattainable, but it's a single digits knowing that there's 12 minutes and lots of time in the basketball game and you just ended the quarter, the previous quarter on a high note, then you hope that you carry it over if you can pick up the intensity, if you can do your things properly defensively and force your opposition into tough shots and one and dones and get into the open floor and get some shots in transition and get some easy buckets. But that's what they've been doing, Dan. The Hurricanes need a rebound right now and they need a rebound quickly. Just a correction, that's uh, White, uh, Royce White's fourth foul. In the meantime, a foul here offensively to Billy White. And we'll take a look at it as we see the give and go there. White back it in on Williamson, and Williamson had his feet set. Good call there. 89 to 81, 640 left to go, and all of a sudden uh, stops for what the Hurricanes need. As I said, this thing's got more up and downs than a teeter potter here this evening here in Scotiabank Center, game number three. Series tied at one. There's a difference maker, White now. Loses the ball, out of bounds, but it goes off a Hurricane player, well guarded there by Washington. Nine to shoot, 6.25 left. <laughs> Paul Hanson warning some of the uh, bench staff, uh, the reserves there for the Lightning to back up a bit. White can't hit. And that's a big defensive stop that the Hurricanes need because he was starting to get on a roll. And an offensive foul, and <laughs> Billy White goes and has a little conversation there, and Paul Hansen gets in between that. So lots White. of contact between these two teams. A lot of frustration being displayed by the Hurricanes, but it looks like the Lightning are not playing into this as they have the lead, and they have all the momentum, and it's shifted early in this fourth quarter is continuing to carry over. It's a seven, uh, excuse me, an eight point lead for the it's Lightning. and Fifth against Billy White and that's big. They need an answer, they need an answer. I'm not sure where it's gonna come from. Maybe Mason needs to pick up his game. Flint Scales gotta pick up where he left off in that third quarter to try to rebound, but they need an answer quickly here as things are starting to come undone. 
There's a second shot at the halfway point. Ryan Anderson. Well, and Watson was right in his Ooh, face, but three. gets it up and over and drains the three. He is not coming undone, and that's Ryan Anderson. And it's been it's from the get-go this evening. He has been very good this evening offensively for the Lightning. And as things start to unravel, Dixon loses the ball as he again able to handle the hot pass. Turnover and the London Lightning continue now here to have their hand around the juggler of the Halifax Hurricanes. 540 left to go here in game number three from the Scotiabank Center. Anderson, deep three. Definitely heat check. Heat check. <laughs> yeah. We were right on cue. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely was a heat check from that distance. Mason trying to get it going too strong. Loose ball. And it's a loose ball foul. And if it's white, that's his fifth. It and is. it is. Yeah. He's not happy at all. A little frustrated. Well, this, all of a sudden, goes. things are about to pick up, Vince. Yeah. Yes. Well, that, this could be the key to turning the tide here. As, you know, Royce White going to the bench. You probably won't see him until around maybe the 2.30 mark or the three-minute mark, all depending on how the team plays and responds to his absence. So a big moment here in this game with 524 left in the fourth. Hurricanes inbound. Mason now one-on-one -on -one against Kadugan. Drives into the paint off over the trees. Unable to hit. Loose ball. And body scrambling here on the floor. Kadugan back out. Phillips. Short rim. He had that shot there in the closing stages of the third quarter. Good look from distance for Phillips, but it might have been too quick as he just had been injected into the game. With the lead and time and score, you might want to hold on to it and use the shot clock to your advantage. Five to go as Clakescale drives in the paint and Capers called for the foul. And now he's up to his fifth. So Royce White up to five. Billy White for the Hurricanes at five, and now Marcus Capers at five, with 4.59 left. Friesen tried to get to the scorer's table, but not in time, so now he will have to wait till the next whistle, and there it is. And the foul call, and Brian Anderson puts his hands up to say, I didn't do it, but Paul Hansen says, yes, you did. And now Friesen will enter the game as we take a look at Anderson. Coming into the game. It's a 15 foul there for the London Lightning. That's a second for Anderson, so he's okay. Dixon hands it off to Mason now, outside the arc. Nine to shoot, 4.50 to go. Takes it inside, tough take. Tried to shoot it through the body. Clay scales for three from downtown, not able to hit. As Friesen had him well defended. That's a tough shot and good defensive stop there by the, the Lightning as they were able to force the ball away from the rim and force that tough shot with the shot clock dying from Klinscales. Kadugan hesitates oh, and then drives nice. and gets the bucket. Pretty hesitation. 13-point game. Pretty hesitation and right-handed finish out the window by Kadugan as he was able to freeze this defender off the dribble drive. And the outstretched arm of Ronaldo coming late didn't phase Friesen as he was able to get that one to go. So all the momentum swinging squarely in the Lightning's favor as they just basically took over this game, Dan, and the Hurricanes need to find an answer, and they need to find an answer real quick as they are down by their largest deficit of 13 on the evening. Not to be surprised, the London Lightning had 16 straight wins before their game two loss to the Hurricanes on, uh, over the weekend. So of course, before that happened, the London Lightning lost a game, last loss came on April 8th. Fantastic streak, and the thing is like, five losses in the regular season, and some of those came early, so They've yeah. definitely had a great 2017 for sure. Well, there you go, only one loss in 2017, and the last loss before that, the previous one, was December the 26th on uh, Boxing Day, as they lost inside their own building as they reeled off 24 straight home wins before the defeat 
in game number two between these two teams. So, I mean, this team has been very good in their own building and on the road. So they're no stranger at being in the situation. Up 13 points and with um, 4.25 to go in the game. Man, lots of time left though for the Hurricanes. This is not obtainable, you know, it's not out of reach. So, I mean, it is obtainable, excuse me. It's not one of a, a deficit that they can't get back, but they need to turn up the intensity on the defensive end, and they need to knock down some shots now. Billy White back in the game. He's got five fouls, so that's something to keep an eye on the defensive side for the Hurricanes. Bounce entry pass to Washington, and he fumbles it, and it goes out of bounds, and you can see the defensive intensity here for yeah. London has picked up. They have just found an answer. They have just found whether it was strategy or just sheer will or determination. I'm not sure, maybe a combination of both, but they have found some magic in this fourth quarter when it comes to playing defense. Watson went for the pick and unable to come up with it, but they couldn't get the bucket to go as the London Lightning clink scales watched by Cadogan. Here's Billy White up top. Hands it to Clink Scales. 3.36 to go, Washington cuts. Goes down, Marvin Phillips said, I didn't do anything. Clink Scales with the take, and he's hacked, and he'll have a chance to knock him down from the three throw line. And he's gotta knock these down, and he both he can't come up with an empty trip, especially with the, the game clock not going here. And this is a perfect opportunity to get back into this game. Free throws are gonna be very important they're going to get them, they got to make them. 74% coming into the game tonight. Clink scales from the three throw line. 23 of 31. That's combined for the regular season and playoffs. Sometimes you have to be the team captain. You have to right the ship, and it's now mostly his time to do it here as he sinks the first one. Three and a half left, as you see, as we take a look at the DePaul University product. And he'll sink that one. Well, that's an excellent start. Now they need a defensive stop here. And well, there it is. Poole steals it. Now can they feed off of this with 3.20 to go? 11-point game. Washington, the ball movement, fantastic here. Clink scales, fouled there by Friesen on the drive. That should be team number seven. Clink should be going to the free throw line. Looks like it may be team six. It is team seven. It's team seven, you're correct on that. So Clink scales will go back to the free throw line. Very important free throw opportunities here coming up for Clink scales. So he needs to knock down these two and Royce White get this deficit made his way to the table digits. here. Yeah, Royce, you could, I told you, it'd be around the three minute mark or the 230 mark Royce where we'll see White. Royce right back into this. And you gotta think, if you're the London Lightning, you gotta feed the beast down the stretch. Pretty much every time down, if it's gonna be a double digit lead, you're gonna have to go through. Your offense has to be worked through Royce White. Royce White has to have touches on the offensive end if they're in their half court set. Mike Scales gets the first one to go down, so it is a 10 point game. And you mentioned earlier about the importance of single digits. Clank Scales can do it with this one and does. Nine point game. So now we got a three possession game here. Now we need to buckle down and find a way to get the one and done or force the turnover here. They're trying to give the double team, broken there by Anderson. Goes cross court to White. White guarded by Clay Scales. That's the Scotia Bank Center crowd. Get behind Don't the be home fooled. team Hurricanes. Yeah. That's poked away. Don't be fooled. The big man can handle the rock in the open floor. He is a very accomplished ball handler, Royce White is. I'm not sure if he can get by the quick handed Clink Scales. Think very good of swiping balls away amongst the league leaders and steals per, per game on the season. Cadogan comes in for Friesen. Kind of interesting why you were talking there that uh, looked like Friesen and Anderson weren't seeing eye to eye. Shot put up. And now John Hunt and Paul Hansen will get together. 
And Poole's going to be called for the foul, and he's looking up and has his arms out. There it is. Anderson trying to get the uh, get to the sh get the shot off so he can go to the line if anything. But Poole will be called for a second, the 15 foul, 2:47 left to go. Royce White sets the screen up. Anderson still has the ball. Washington in his kitchen. Fade away jumper, too strong. And the long rebound gathered up there by Clink Scales. Nine point game. Chance to make it a two possession here if they can shoot the three. Pass almost picked off. White bounce pass to Washington inside. Bucket. Seven point game, 94 to 87. Yeah, it looks like Coach Julius is a trying to let his veteran team work through the wrinkles here and make the adjustments on the fly as the clock is their friend. They're in no hurry to rush into their offense, but it's definitely got to go through Royce White on this possession. Two to go, seven to shoot. Cadogan gets the contact, no call. Royce White, second chance opportunity, and there is the foul. Yeah, Cadogan. Looking for the uh, contact there. Did a good job, as you can see in the replay, as Washington might have gotten away with it, but Royce White working without the basketball as he was able to race to the spot and get to the spot first, beating Antoine Mason. And you can hear the hometown faithful try to get on White, and doesn't phase him a bit on the first one yeah, as he sakes it 95 to 87, Vince. Not sure anything can phase this guy on the evening. He's been very good, an outstanding effort offensively once again by Royce White. He drains both, and it's 96 to 87. 150 left to go. Cool, three, yes! Oh, huge three. Now they need a stop, they need a turnover here or a one and done. A quick break out here by the Camp. London Lightning. Williamson, capers! Foul before he could get the shot off. He'll have a chance to knock him down, but he's making his way down, and he seems to be injured. He's way from the court and out of the camera range right yeah. now, but yeah, he's not in good shape. You can see in the replay, no standing decision there off of the dribble drive and cutting down the middle of the court was Capers. And another replay here as Poole's able to knock down that three from distance. Good ball movement, unselfish basketball by the Canes. But it looks like Capers is favoring his... Uh, his calf muscle looks like it's either he pulled it or it might have been a cramp. Either way, Joel Friesen looks like he's checking into the game to knock down some free throws. Friesen, a very good free throw shooter. So we're at this point, a definitely advantage go to the, light, the Lightning having Joel Friesen check in and shoot these free throws. Yeah, the thing is, is Caper doubles like 15, 20 feet away from the court area, almost close to the beer tent. Friesen pretty much missed their automatic. Sinks that one. It's their automatic from the free throw line. That's yeah, 79% in the regular season in playoffs there, the former Hurricane. Yeah, there's no way he was missing. The ownership both of group them. wanted it back, but they couldn't come to financial details, so he ended up signing with the London Lightning. 95 seconds left to go. Eight point game. Hurricanes need buckets and then eat stops. Lightning. Continue to play through, Clay Scales, tough take it in. Now they need a stop here, they can't afford the foul. Gotta try to make it tough on the, the Lightning, they gotta force them to make quick decisions with the basketball here. Yeah, both teams at 17 fouls, none to give here. Into the closing stages here, Royce White. Anderson also have a big night here for the Lightning. Frees a chance for the dagger against his old team oh, and gets the three. Shot. And that just might do it here on a Tuesday night. Outstanding half court offense, unselfish basketball by Ryan Anderson. Beautiful play off the dribble drive. Looked like he was going to pull up or continue to attack the rim. Joel Friesen, Mr. Opportunistic, steps into a wide open three and was able to knock that down and put this one pretty much out of reach and steal home court advantage here in game number three. So I was, I was kind of watching Kyle Julius and Don Mills going back and forth with each other and Julius said something to Mills and he wasn't too happy about it and Mills almost made his way over to that uh, 
lightning bench area. It was definitely entertaining, never, definitely well, it's intense. Never it's never a dull moment in the front row here at Scotia. Yeah, Pink you'll Center. see things and hear things some. you never expect to see at a you professional never basketball game. Exactly, even at like in the <laughs> stands area. We've seen some exchanges between the ownership group and the fans that sit in that front row yep. next to the opposition, pretty much every team. Yeah. I mean, I think our favorite's probably the Moncton Miracles and Coach McCaskey. Because he likes to come all the way up and stand in front and pretty much block well, well, the side out. Well, we're in the, the back fans. road like we are today, and he stands there. You know, it, it's literally we've got nothing. Seven foot two, two hundred and some odd pounds. It's very difficult to look through. He'll still let man. Julius have it here. Yeah, not happy. Let's set up the octagon and let those boys go at it. Yeah, Don Mills not happy. One of the owners, part of the ownership group here with the Halifax Hurricanes, not happy with <laughs> Kyle Julius right now. Oh, one of his friends, tell, one of the friends comes over, tell Mills to settle down. Here's Cadogan, layup, bucket. If, if Frieza put one nail in the coffin, the other one has been put in here by Cadugan. 11-point yeah. game, less than a minute to go. Yeah, let the celebrations begin. I mean, the London Lightning fought back into this game. Things looked bleak at the start of the fourth quarter, down by nine points, went on that 18-2 run to start the fourth and pretty much put this one away. Full momentum swing as they just had a sense of urgency on the defensive side. And it all started on the defensive side. They made it tough for the Hurricanes. They forced them into some tough shots, got the one and dones, and they got those easy runouts. And when you eject Royce White back into the game and he's, you know, garnering a double team and everybody's looking at him, it opens up the floor for everybody else. And that's exactly what happened as Ryan Anderson continued his hot shooting throughout the night and he was very effective and the role players were very good down the stretch for the London Lightning as well. Yeah, speaking of Anderson, he's at the stripe as the foul was the Clay Scales, his second. As I mentioned earlier, both teams over the limit there as that one rattles down and goes down. 30 seconds left to go in a very quiet Scotiabank Center and some of the fans making their way home as CJ Washington hits the window and no good. And now the shot clock shut off, so you can imagine Anderson will just get it over half and hold on to it here. 105 to 92, and reminder folks that Vince Williams will have a post-game wrap-up at NBL Canada website. Talk to the player of the game and have a couple of choices that you can actually go through, yeah, so we well, can tune into that one. It's gonna be pretty easy this evening. Ryan Anderson rebounding from a one out of eight performance with finishing the night in game number two with five points, but tonight a different story. This guy was absolutely fantastic for the London Lightning. 12 for 18 from the field, five for eight from downtown, perfect from the charity stripe, 10 assists and seven rebounds. He was three rebounds away from a triple-double with 33 points on the night. Easy choice as top performer tonight. Okay, final score. Thank you, Vince. 105 to 92. The London Lightning over the Halifax Hurricanes. The London Lightning take a two to one series lead. Game four Thursday night here at the Scotia Bank Center. We want to thank the Silver Vision crew. As also, we'd like to thank the fans watching from London. Hope you have a good celebration tonight. A well earned victory here for the Lightning as they are now taking a 2-1 series lead. So with all that, of course, thanks to the Silver Vision crew, as well as Vince Williams, my name's Dan Hobson. Thank you for watching NBL Canada YouTube, and so long from the Scotiabank Centre.